Hey guys, how's it going? I'm out working in the vegetable garden, pulling a few weeds, checking on my garlic, and I'll show you the progress of the garlic here in a second. But first I wanted to answer a couple questions that I saw from our last video um, about bulbs. So I planted a bunch of tulip and daffodil bulbs that I said I had forced. Um, so we wanted to explain that because I didn't explain that in the video, nor did I explain what I'm gonna do with the bulbs after they're done blooming. Okay, so forcing bulbs means that you're essentially putting them into cold storage early and forcing them to bloom earlier than they would normally bloom outside. It's really fun to do, it doesn't hurt the plant at all. So you grab your bulbs, usually late summer, early fall, so August, September, maybe into October, you get them right into cold storage, so somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and it tricks them into winter early. Each variety of bulb requires a different amount of chill time, so tulips and daffodils typically require 12 to 16 weeks in that chilly environment. Uh, I think hyacinths are 12 to 14, crocus 8 to 10. You can find all of that information online. Uh, and then you pull them out of the cold storage after that amount of time, so I always write it down on the calendar so I make sure to give them the proper amount. And then you plant them up and put them somewhere not usually like right in your house where it's super warm you want to give them kind of a transition area to kind of emerge from the soil so i've got ours out in the cold frame greenhouse where it's kind of uh it's not as cold as it is outside but not as warm as, as it is inside so i'll let them kind of start growing there and then as soon as they start blooming i'll pull them out or pull them into the house or you know wherever i want to display them um this year i got into or i got to the project a little bit later than i normally would um i had them in cold storage a long time ago i could have planted them up earlier but we had benjamin and you know life just happens and it's okay it won't hurt the bulbs at all um, but i'm excited to give you guys updates as they start to grow and bloom the other thing was i saw questions about what I'm going to be doing with those bulbs after I'm done with them in the pots after they're done blooming I'll take them all out of the pots and plant them in the landscape somewhere planting bulbs is not one of my favorite garden chores to do it seems like one of those things that it takes forever to get some fruit from your labor but it's completely worth it um, so I'll take them all out when they're done blooming plant them in the landscape so they will be reused they won't go to waste at all I already have designs for those pots for this summer so I'm planning to use them so I'm gonna have to clear them out anyway okay so I just wanted to explain those couple of things one last thing I wanted to say was just a thank you to you guys we are still receiving presents for Benjamin I mean beautiful gifts handmade gifts thoughtful gifts and I just wanted to just tell you guys how much we appreciate and um, are so thankful for all of you. Uh, I still want to do a, a mail time. I've got a pile of presents I haven't had a chance to show you guys yet and we've just been real busy trying to get some things organized because spring is like coming up on us pretty quick here in Eastern Oregon. We're having some nice weather so we're kind of kicking into high gear which I'm excited for but I just wanted to tell, tell all of you guys thank you and how much I really appreciate it. Okay, so what I want to do is run down to the garden center first. I'm going to pick up a soil thermometer. I want to test the difference between the soil temperature in my raised beds versus the soil. Um, also to see if it's okay at this point to seed some stuff in the ground. I just want to check it out, see how close we are. My natural inclination is just to go ahead and plant stuff right now because that's how I like to do things. I might pick up a few starts and some row cover. So let's go down there and see what we've got. Before we go, let me give you a little quick peek at the Italian garlic that I planted. You can see oh, most of it came up. It's looking really nice. There's a little bit of a gap. I was noticing, oh, nope, no gap. There it is. It just isn't coming up yet. Some of them are a little bit slow. Yep, there's another one. They're just still covered. So I'm gonna be patient here. There's another weed. Dang, I missed one. I think we've got a really good stand. Pretty much 100% germination in this raised bed. Now on this one, a little different. So this one I have German red in this aisle and I'll go over there and see if there's some just hiding under the soil but there's not much in that row. The red toque, I don't know you guys if that's how you say it. I think that's how people were telling me that, to pronounce it. It looks pretty good and we've got some tall ones. The chesnut is all up but it looks weird. Look at it. Like it's, it looks like it's been treated with a growth regulator or something. Isn't that weird? Any ideas? I'm just gonna keep on watering and fertilizing like I would normally and hopefully it pulls through. Looks like you've got some gardener supply stuff just being dropped off. Hey. Yeah. My dad's all stressed out because they just got a bunch of plants in. So uh, Sester Farms, 
We just got an 800 piece plant load from them. Tomorrow, Monrovia is dropping off a thousand piece plant load. And we've got Bailey's Nurseries dropping off. It's the time of year, man. I'm coming here to check out what we've got back here. I'm so excited. Forget the soil thermometer. I see some white cans. That's promising. I'm drawn to these right away. Looks like a hydrangea. Aha. Uh -huh. Firelight. Incredible. We've got Miss Molly butterfly bushes. Sweet. Show off. I think I have one of these in the greenhouse that I wintered over. Remember the other day, you guys, when I showed you this whole area back here was empty? It's starting to fill up. So what we do is we unload the trucks, you know, the pallet, all the plants on the pallets with a forklift. We bring them back here, kind of organize them, water them, and then we take one pallet at a time up front and we display them. And sometimes we have back stock back here in the spring especially. But it, my dad is right, it's gonna start getting a little tight back here this week with multiple plant loads. What do you have there? <laughs> Something new. <laughs> Stanley and Sons Nursery. Uh-huh. Exciting. And they're all kinds of little Ooh. evergreens, little specialty evergreens. It's and they're little... beautiful. <gasps> oh, I gotta set this down. Oh my goodness. Super awesome. <laughs> All right, I just need a really simple soil thermometer. That'll work. So this is all I ended up with from the garden center. I've got these garden domes. These are just glorified hot caps that you can reuse from year to year instead of the white paper ones. They're a really pretty like greenhouse look, like a cloach and they have a little vent on the top that you could open and close. I got the soil therm thermometer. I got a Burgarten Sage. I did get one more hellebore because that's just what I do. And this one is called New York Night. And then I got some veggies. I got the green broccoli, the broccoli kale mix, and then I got a late Dutch type cabbage um, called Zulima. Zulima and it matures in 115 days, and then a China Star Napa style cabbage right here. And these look really nice. All right, so I'm gonna try this thermometer out first. Oh, but oh my word, I'm gonna take my coat off because it is warm out here. And Benjamin's still out here with me. He's napping right now. So this is pretty nice because it'll tell us when to start things. So at 45 degrees, cabbage, celery, onion, and peas, 50 degrees broccoli, 60 degrees tomato and corn, and so on. So I'm just gonna stick it down in the soil in this raised bed and we'll see what we get. So it looks like we're right at 50 degrees in the raised beds, which is awesome. That means I can start everything that I brought home today and it should be safe. Um, let me show you where I put each kind. So in this row right here, there are four of the Chinese star, China star cabbage. And then we've got four of the broccoli kale cross right in front, and then four of the green broccoli in the back. And I kind of, I didn't space them out exactly perfect because I wanted one cap to cover, uh, you know, kind of a grouping of plants because these caps are kind of big. So in each one of the, these domes, there are three little holes in the base. So I'm using landscape staples. So these right here that usually hold down landscape fabric. And I'm just running them through each hole into the raised bed. That way it'll keep them from blowing away if we get any wind, which we will. 
uh, and there's three holes on each one of these domes so they are pretty nice and secure in these beds i hear a baby waking up hi benjamin are you waking up from your nap hey buddy you've done so well do you love the fresh air you want to go inside and have a snack so now that that is done, I just have one cleanup project I'm gonna do. I've got the lawn tractor with the trailer hooked up, a bunch of burlap um, bags and stuff that we just had a bunch of concrete delivered in. So I'm gonna go get rid of those. I already have a bunch of burlap in the barn. Uh, and then I'm going to clean out the cabbage and pansies that are in front of our house. They're still there from last fall. They look pretty bad. In fact, they kind of have that really stinky cabbage smell and I feel bad for like the FedEx guy, <laughs> UPS guy. They have to walk by them all the time uh, because they are very pungent. So I'm gonna go empty the trailer and then work on that project. And I think that'll be it for, the, for today because it's gonna get dark here pretty quick. Those are looking pretty bad. Time to clean them out. That looks so much better <laughs> just being cleaned out. I forgot to bring my rake up here with me, but I got it smoothed out pretty well. And I'll just come back up here later with some tools and get it all finished up. But it won't be long and we'll be planting this up with annuals. I think I'm gonna do um, a mix of stuff this year and probably bring more pink into this spot instead of purple like I did last year. We shall see. I'm just trying to chip away at the cleanup here. Like I need to bring my hedge trimmers up right here. This grass, this is a miscanthus. It's absolutely gorgeous. But you can see it's making a huge mess. It's just like every time the wind blows, there's just crap all over in the grass. So I need to bring hedge trimmers up here and I just cut it all off at the base. And then I'm also gonna take care of this privet hedge. See how uh, much it's grown. I have like a bunch of wild arms and I want it to be very square. Uh, very formal and a lot of you guys have actually asked me why I haven't gotten rid of this privet hedge up here and let me show you why it's hiding a giant AC unit up here I don't know why on earth anybody ever thought to place an AC unit right in front of the house because if I back up see that there's the front of the house and they chose that spot to put the AC unit. There is a little white fence around it, which I guess kind of covers it. And if I had this side that faces this direction covered with fence too, it might be a little different. But for now, the privet hedge is staying because it does uh, mask that pretty well. But I'm very excited to see how the limelight hydrangeas do in this spot. I do notice that even when we get winter moisture, this corner does not get very much. I'm really hoping that that pine makes it. It's not looking super great and I think it just stayed too dry this winter. I'm usually a little bit more on top of everything um, as in terms of winter care and making sure things stay watered even when you know it's freezing outside and you're like that's the last thing on your mind but um, with Benjamin and everything I mean oh, I'm making excuses here you know it just happens stuff like that so occasionally we have to replace something in our garden uh, and I'm just bummed that it's that because that was not a cheap pine. <laughs> Um, but we do have more coming in at the garden center, I double check. All right, just gotta go unload all this, and then I'm gonna go inside and make dinner, and that's the end of garden work for today. So that's it for garden projects today. I'm actually really happy with all that I was able to get done. I'm just kind of chipping away at it. I don't know how you guys do it. I mean, do you go out and get it all done in one weekend, or do you just work on it a little bit at a time? I think every year is different for me. Last year it was kind of all at one time because we had to wait for so long because the weather was so bad. This year, I'm so thankful it's been so nice because I wouldn't have been able to get it all, all done at once because of um, having Benjamin and you know having more responsibilities that way um, that I'm just chipping away at it. But I really like it. I'm able to slow down and enjoy each step uh, and that's really uh, nice for a change. Uh, we are gonna do another video about planting spring crops um, in terms of what you can plant really early and what you need to wait a little bit on. Uh, and just kind of a rundown of all the stuff that I can plant in, uh, in my zone five climate anyway. So if you have any questions regarding spring crop planting, drop them in the comment section below. We'll make sure to read through those and address those in the video. So thank you guys again so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.